Piaget. Jean Piaget's theory of cognitive development is one of the most influential theories of child development. According to Piaget, children progress through a series of four cognitive stages, each marked by distinct changes in the way they think, reason and understand the world. The first stage is the sensory motor stage, which is from birth to about two years old. This stage is marked by the development of sensory and motor abilities. Children learn the world through their senses and actions, gradually developing object permanence, the understanding that objects continue to exist even when they are out of sight. Stage two is the pre-operational stage, which is from two to seven years. During this stage, children develop symbolic thinking and language skills. They are egocentric, meaning they have difficulty understanding that others have different perspectives than their own. The third stage is the concrete operational stage, which is from about seven to 11 years. This stage is marked by the development of logical thinking, and the ability to understand concrete and tangible concepts. Children can conserve, which means they can understand that the amount of a substance remains the same despite changes in its appearance. The final stage is the formal operational stage from 11 years and above. During this stage, individuals developed abstract thinking and the ability to reason logically about hypothetical situations. They can think systematically and draw conclusions based on abstract concepts. Assimilation and accommodation are two key concepts in Piaget's theory. Assimilation occurs when a child incorporates new information into their existing schema or mental framework. For example, a child who has a schema for a dog may assimilate a new dog into that schema. Accommodation, on the other hand, occurs when a child modifies their existing schema to fit new information. For example, a child may accommodate their schema for dog after encountering a cat and creating a new schema for cat. Piaget's theory emphasises the active role of children in constructing their own understanding of the world around them. Children are seen as active learners who construct their own knowledge through their experiences and interactions with their environment. In terms of education, Piaget's theory suggests that educators should take into account the cognitive abilities of children at each stage of development. For example, educators can support children's learning by creating developmentally appropriate activities that align with their cognitive abilities. In the sensory motor stage, educators can provide opportunities for children to explore and interact with their environment through play. In the pre-operational stage, Educators can use concrete examples and visual aids to help children understand abstract concepts. In the concrete operational stage, educators can provide opportunities for children to engage in hands-on learning and problem solving. In the formal operational stage, educators can challenge students to think critically and apply abstract concepts to real-world situations. Piaget also said that children progress through each stage through the process of ageing. Therefore, you can't progress to the next stage until you are biologically ready to progress to the next stage. Therefore, teaching a child an advanced skill before they are ready would be a waste of time for the child and educator. Children can also progress through these at slightly different paces, and educators should be aware of this. Case study five. McGarrigal and Donaldson's Naughty Teddy study aimed to investigate children's understanding of conservation, to investigate the original work carried out by Piaget. In the original study by Piaget, children were shown two identical glasses filled with the same amount of water. The experimenter poured water from one of the glasses into a taller, thinner glass in front of the child, making it appear as if the amount of water had increased. The child was then asked if the two glasses contained the same amount of water or if one had more. Prior to age seven, children tended to say that the taller glass contained more water, indicating a lack of conservation understanding. After age seven, children were more likely to understand that the amount of water had not changed and the two glasses contained the same amount. Hughes conducted the following experiment to compare conservation skills in children. Their aim was to see if there were a change in the child's reaction if there was no deliberate change in the row of counters i.e. if the change was accidental. Their method. There were 80 children in the study from Edinburgh in Scotland. 
40 were nursery age, with a mean age of four years and 10 months, and 40 were primary age, with a mean age of five years and 10 months. They were introduced to a naughty teddy, who may escape from his box and try to mess up the toys in the children's game. The teddy jumped out of his box and pushed the counters about. This made the same amount of counters in one row look longer than the other row, and that row looked shorter. The adult would ask before and after the teddy's interruption, are there more here or more here, or are they both the same? Pointing at both of the rows. The results. About 41% of the children gave the correct answer when the row was changed deliberately. But in the version where the teddy disrupted the rows, 68% of the children gave the correct answer. Primary children were able to conserve more effectively than the younger nursery age children. Conclusions. This study shows that the traditional method of testing conservation underestimated what children can do. In this study, many of the nursery age children were able to conserve at a younger age than Piaget originally said. There was, however, a difference between the primary and nursery age children. A weakness of McGarrigal and Donaldson's study was that they just used primary age children from the same school. This may affect the results as they may have had a specific type of teaching or better language development than other children. Another weakness may be that the children were distracted by the teddy, that they didn't notice the change in the rows, so they had no need to change in their answers. Therefore, they aren't actually conserving the items, they're just looking at the teddy. The strength of this research is that it acknowledges Piaget's original research, but then shows there is a difference in his findings, and he may have confused younger children in the way that he questioned them. Case study six. The development of conservation, Hughes Policeman Doll study. This was designed to build on Piaget's three mountain study, where children were shown three mountains, one with a hut, one with snow, and one with a red cross on it. The doll was placed in random locations near the mountain and children were able to move around to see the different viewpoints of the mountain. The children were then asked to study some pictures and choose which was taken from the doll's perspective. The results showed that children aged four chose pictures that showed their perspective rather than the dolls, but children aged seven or above were able to choose the correct pic. The aim. Hughes's policeman doll study aimed to investigate children's reduction of egocentricity. The method. Hughes tested 30 children aged three and a half to five years, also from schools in Edinburgh. In this study, children were shown a model of a street scene with a toy policeman and a doll. The experimenter asked the child to take on the perspective of the policeman and hide the doll from the viewpoint of a second policeman. This was conducted twice to check the child's understanding of the positions prior to the actual experiment starting. The results. Children under the age of three tended to hide the doll from their own viewpoint, indicating a lack of understanding of another's perspective. However, by age four, children were more likely 90% of them, to successfully take on the perspective of the second policeman and hide the doll out of their view. The conclusion. Those children between three and a half to five years old can see things from another person's perspective if they are used to the situation and if the task is clear for them to follow. A strength of this research is that the task used made sense more to the children than Piaget's original version. This was more similar to the type of games and problems most children would encounter in everyday life than the three mountains task. It is difficult to pick out the view of the mountains the doll would see, but much easier to think about where you would hide from someone else. Hughes also took the time to run through the questions and set up the task with the children first so that they understood what they were being asked. A weakness is that the researcher may have unconsciously hinted about the correct answer. It could be the person conducting the study with the children may have given subtle clues about where the doll could have been hidden. Another strength is that it challenges Piaget's research. This again shows the credibility of Piaget's original work, but shows that there were omissions on the way he set up the research and the way he worded some of his questions.